Hey guys, what's up? My name is Gabe and this is Games with Gabe. This is the next episode in my Jade Engine devlog series. So as you can see here, I have the engine open because I'm about to show you some of the stuff that I've done since the last episode. It is about a week and a half later, but I've only been working for about a week and a large portion of that time has been spent refactoring things and just making my code a lot better. Uh, for instance, I decoupled I am GUI code completely from the engine because I am GUI is only having to do with the level editor stuff, so like the editor. And so now the editor only has I am GUI code and the engine has no I am GUI code. So that took a while. <laughs> but I have gotten scene browsing up. You can see I have a scene browser down here. The text is kind of jumbled because I haven't fixed like formatting the text down here and stuff yet. But you can see if I click on scene one, I'm taken to here. And I'll also open up the texture browser just so you can see. I've got these textures in scene one, but then if I go to scene two, you'll notice I have two different textures. And if I look at the texture browser here, it only has those textures. So the textures are stored per scene, which is good because it means I'm only loading in the textures required for a scene. And so for instance, this one has no textures because that's just using the default texture. Another thing I've done is object outlining. So you can see that even with complex shapes, I have the object outlined. What I did to accomplish this was just using, um, I think it's Gauss Seidel, is some sort of sharpening technique. And I modified it a little bit to, instead of sharpen the image, to create a thin outline around whatever object it's highlighting. This is not zoom independent though, and so I may tweak this in the future. And it's also kind of jagged and stuff. You can see sort of pixelated edges and stuff. And so I have some ways that I can fix that pretty easily. I just have to get around to doing it. Another thing I'm currently doing is these objects are now being selected uh, and determine which object, object I'm clicking on using 3D picking. So what that means is if I move this character over here and click in between the legs, I will still get the character behind it. This is super cool and this also works with Z indexing because I can do that and then I'll click on that and it still works. Um, the way this works is it's pixel perfect. So even if I go and zoom in super close, you'll notice there's a tiny hole in her legs, but if I click through it, it works. And that's because I have a shader that's running and it's storing the ID of these game objects in a picture where basically all of the pixels that occupy the object, so like all these pixels for the girl will store her ID and all the pixels for this will store his ID and then I basically just check and see which pixel I clicked on in my image. And then I, I retrieve whatever color that is, which is technically the ID. And then I know which object I then clicked on. And if I click on none, that stores uh, F, 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 F in hexadecimal, which means I did not click on any object. And speaking of this too, I have Z indexing, which you can see here, and it works properly. So if I have three objects, I don't know if I have a scene with three objects. I'll just add a new one in here real quick. So in this scene, I have three objects and let's just make this one a little bit bigger and I'll give him a box sprite sheet too. Okay. And I'll put him behind Santa and then Santa behind this box. So I'll say him at negative one, this guy at negative two and this guy at zero. And so now you'll see that they're all properly Z indexed, which is good because that's just a nice feature to have and it should be present in any 2D engine. I also have <laughs> a project creation window and everything and I've worked pretty heavily, so let me close out of this real quick, on uh, serializing important stuff such as the editor style. So this is like the style, the colors and everything of the editor. And if I go into here and, for example, change the main background to be a red color, so I'll change this to 1.0. I don't have to do any recompiling. I'll just reload my project and it loads the new style. And you can create any style sheet and then load that style through the engine. I will eventually make it so you can tweak things in the engine itself and get all that working. But that's a pretty cool feature, I think, because then you can create custom themes and stuff. Another thing I have is, for example, let's go and check. You'll see that this says this is new project.jprg and this is new scene three. And so if we go into my Jade projects, you'll notice that new project.jprg is this test project one. And what if for some reason this project had gotten deleted? So I'll delete it. Now it doesn't know what to open up to. 
And so instead it opens up to a welcome screen, which basically says create a project or open a project. And then I can go in here and I could go to that other project that was there. So if I go into here, it says Mario, but it's really just nothing. <laughs> It'll open up to this project instead. And then what if this one gets deleted too? Well, then it'll just do the same thing. It'll open up to here and I can create a project instead. And so let's say I created a project inside of here and I said I want it to be inside of test project. And I'll just select that folder, call this test project, and then I'll hit create. Now I'm inside here just to show that this will be remembered. I'll click onto here, change the color to red, save all this, and then I will exit. If I reopen it, now I get opened up into the project and you'll notice it also says test project, new scene.jade up here. So lots of really cool stuff. All these things are really just like uh, good to have qualities in an engine. It's just making the overall workflow there. You know, you need all these things in order to start creating projects, to edit projects, to open up new projects and everything. And you need some way to collect all that data. And so the way I'm actually collecting all that data and stuff too is inside of percent app data windows i'll eventually make a different file for uh mac and linux but you basically have this editor save data .json, which contains whatever style they're currently using it contains the i am gui config so if you change your layout of your i am gui this will change it as well and it contains whatever project you were last working on and then i have a complicated initialization sequence which basically checks to see if the project still exists if it does not it defaults to the create a project wizard which is what you saw and then inside of here you can see if we open this up the projects actually contain just simple information like what scene were they currently working on what is the project's path what is the working directory so the project path is the path to whatever the actual file for the project is. And then the working directory is whatever directory contains all the contents. Then I can go into the scenes and the scenes are also very similar, except they contain uh, the assets first. So how many assets do they have? This scene has zero. Its ID is zero. So this will be used for determining like which level scene or whatever you're in. They all have a unique ID. Then it just goes and lists off all the components. And so in this case, we only had one game object, which had a component, which had a transform. And you'll see this says it's entity zero. And then it had a sprite render, which you'll also see was entity zero. And this asset ID is super huge because it's a default asset, which means it gets FFFFFF, whatever. <laughs> and then lastly, it contains the project in how many game objects or components are inside of this, which we have two components. So yeah, that's basically the workflow. Now what I need to get done is C-sharp scripting, right? I need to be able to attach scripts because that would be awesome. <laughs> but there is a problem. I have not coded in C-sharp standalone at all. Like I've coded uh, C-sharp Unity scripting, but I've never really done just general projects. So uh, my job, I also got information about my first project in my job, which is going to be using C Sharp. So I'm taking this as an opportunity to learn C Sharp. And in order to learn it, what I'm going to do is build Pac-Man. I figure this is a simple enough task. I'll try and do it in like three hours max. See if I can get Pac-Man going, get some good AI and some noise effects and stuff. I think I'm going to use Mono Game because I've looked into that just a little bit before. And we'll see how that goes. So cue the time lapse. All right, guys, so I think I can confidently say that I'm good with C-sharp. I didn't finish the Pac-Man game just because I really don't feel like implementing A-star. <laughs> and uh, especially with the way that I have this coded, it was just very rough and put together. I just wanted to learn the basics of C-sharp, and I think I can confidently say that I've gotten that down. And, I mean, this game is pretty cool. It's almost complete. I might complete it later on because I think I got to this point with another Pac-Man game, too. And never did finish that one either but who knows maybe i'll make it in the jade engine next time and it just crashed so clearly <laughs> it's not perfect but anyways i think i know c sharp well enough so i'm gonna go and try and implement scripting 
What's up guys? It has been like two weeks since I recorded that last clip. Man, was I naive. I'm gonna go implement scripting thinking that'll take a day. It did not take a day, let me tell you. But as you can see, I just started up my project. This is not a C-sharp project, but this is a little hangman game that I made and you can see that I can play it. I'm doing pretty good here. Uh, but I can play it just fine and I coded this completely in C-sharp and I am executing this currently from my engine. So what that means is technically I have scripting enabled. Now it is not integrated at all, but as you can see, once I finish up the game, it says execution of the script yielded zero, which means it succeeded. And then my engine starts up over here and it is working. The reason that I don't really have it integrated here is because that took so long. It's been a couple weeks and uh, partly I was moving and I started a new job, so I didn't have time to look at it too deeply, but I had to transition my entire engine to become a DLL to work properly with mono, which is what I'm using to run the script, uh, the runtime for C Sharp. And documentation is good, but I was it was not clear that you had to have a DLL in order to make it work. So I was running in all sorts of errors and had no idea why things weren't working. And it was a pain in the butt to get working correctly. But as you saw, I'm able to run the C Sharp script. If you wanna take a look at the code, I got the code somewhere on my machine, but it's base, it's just basic C-sharp code. And so the point is it works, and it works good, but right now I'm literally loading it in like this. So if I zoom in a little bit, you can see. Uh, so I initialize mono here, and then I basically just load in the hard-coded path to the exe that's already been compiled. And then if it fails, I say it failed. Otherwise, I execute it and it's executed on the same thread as the engine, which is why you'll see that my window is white while the game is running. And as soon as I execute the game and get out of it, then my engine starts up. So there are a number of things I need to fix. Uh, number one being to integrate this actually with the engine, but I also need to move this onto another thread so that scripts are executing on their own threads so that they don't interrupt the main processes. And I also need to get a compiler in because right now, Mono does not compile uh, C Sharp, so it is only the runtime. So I need to integrate another project, which Roslyn looks like it'll be my best bet to compile C Sharp scripts, then I can use them inside of my engine. But I'm gonna leave it here for this one. In the next part of my Jade engine devlog, I'm gonna actually implement the second half of scripting and possibly some other stuff. I need to clean up a lot of stuff in the engine too. So clean up and implementing scripting part two. So that'll be really fun. I hope you guys enjoyed this. If you did, please hit like and subscribe and stay tuned for the next episode when I actually complete scripting and integrate it fully into the engine and get some other cool stuff. Hopefully I'll have like a little demo game that I can show you too by then. So I'll see you guys then. Thanks. Thanks.